little fox. No two people are the same. No two people are the same. We have different skin colors. I have light skin. He has dark skin. We have different eye colors. I have green eyes. He has brown eyes. She has blue eyes. We have different hair colors. I have blonde hair. He has black hair. She has brown hair. We have different body shapes. He is tall. She is short. We have different abilities, too. I can run fast. He can kick well. She can sing beautifully. We are all very different. No two people are the same. All people are special. Hey, Flag. North America. Today on Hey Flag, we have three special guests from North America. Hey Flag, tell us about yourself. I am the Mexican flag. I have three stripes. The Mexican coat of arms is in the middle. The coat of arms has a very special meaning. It symbolizes the Aztec people who lived in Mexico long ago. The coat of arms shows an eagle sitting on a cactus. The eagle is eating a snake. This symbol came from an Aztec legend. The legend tells how Mexico City was founded. There is a funny story about my red stripe. Originally, the Mexican people wanted to use purple. Purple represented Spain, where most of Mexico's people came from. But they could not find any purple cloth, so they had to use red. Hey, Flag! Tell us about yourself. I am the flag of the United States of America. Many people call me the Stars and Stripes. I have 50 stars, one for each of the states. I also have 13 stripes for each of the original states. I didn't always have 50 stars. Every time a new state was added, I got another star. Many people believe I was first sewn by Betsy Ross. According to the story, George Washington asked Betsy to sew me. The first flag was ready in early June 1776. This was just a month before the United States became an independent country. Many Americans see me as the greatest symbol of their nation. Hey, Flag! Tell us about yourself. I am the Canadian flag. You can call me the Maple Leaf. I did not become the Canadian flag until 1965. Before that, Canadians used the flag of Great Britain. But the people of Canada wanted to have their own flag. The Maple Leaf has been a symbol of Canada for a very long time. In 1860, the Prince of Wales came to Canada for a visit. Everyone in Toronto came out into the streets to greet him. The people who were born in England wore a rose on their shirts. And the people born in Scotland wore a thistle. But there was nothing for the people born in Canada to wear. So they chose to wear a maple leaf from the Canadian maple tree. From that day on, the maple leaf became a Canadian symbol. I hope you learned a lot from our guests. Your flag can tell you a lot about your country. What does your flag mean? Pioneer 
their days. Damon followed Ivan and Kelsey off the school bus and looked around nervously. The field was crowded with people in historical costumes. There were women in long dresses and bonnets, and men in straw hats and leather boots. Welcome to Pioneer Days, Mrs. Manning, the teacher said. In the 1800s, around 400,000 people left their homes in the East. They wanted to settle on open land and find new opportunities. So these pioneers traveled across America in covered wagons to settle in the West. What kind of person wants to dress up like a pioneer? Kelsey said. Yeah, Damon mumbled. He spotted his mother standing by an open fire, wearing her homemade outfit. Before his friends could notice her, Damon pointed wildly across the field. Look at the oxen! Wow! Ivan stared at the huge animals. Why are cows pulling a wagon? Why not just use horses? They're oxen, not cows, Ivan, Mrs. Manning said. Pioneers used oxen instead of horses to pull wagons because they're strong, tough, and slow. <laughs> Kelsey giggled as the oxen trudged past. See the cream pail on the side of the wagon? Mrs. Manning said. The wagon's motion churns the cream into butter. Damon noticed Mom waving at him, but he pretended not to see. Let's go learn about the Native Americans, he said hurriedly. Mrs. Manning checked the time. It's lunchtime now. We're having an authentic pioneer lunch. Shouldn't we see the cow milking station first? Damon asked hopefully. After lunch, Mrs. Manning said firmly. Damon, Kelsey said suddenly. Isn't that your mom? Damon wished he could disappear. Hello, everyone! Mom smiled cheerfully as she handed out plates of food. Everything you're eating here was cooked over an open fire. Most pioneers didn't pack their heavy stoves in the wagons. So they cooked in iron pots called Dutch ovens. She gestured at the pots by the fire. They baked bread and biscuits in these and cooked beans and stews. They had to pack enough flour, beans, rice, cornmeal, and bacon for six months of hard traveling. Sometimes they had to clean the bacon before they ate it to remove mold or bugs. Moldy bacon, Kelsey said. Bugs? Yuck! Ivan pretended to throw up. Moldy bacon was the least of their worries, Damon suddenly heard himself say. The pioneers had to survive storms and diseases. They turned their wagons into boats to float across flooded rivers. Sometimes they even lowered them down cliffs on ropes. When they finally settled, they could only use what they had brought with them. They had to build their own houses, grow their own food, and make their own clothes. Nothing was easy for them. His friends blinked at him in surprise. Damon flushed. Now they were really going to tease him. Wow, Kelsey said finally. I guess the pioneers were pretty tough. And smart, Ivan said. How do you know all this, Damon? My mom brings me to Pioneer Days every year, Damon admitted. I guess I've learned a few things. These biscuits are delicious, Kelsey said with her mouth full. Can you show me how to make them? Maybe seeing mom in her Pioneer outfit was not so bad after all. Sure, Damon grinned. But only if you dress up like a pioneer. <laughs>